that divides the MongoDB podcast live here in New York City at Dot Local. Uh, we have another amazing guest here. We have Matt AC, the VP of Developer Relations at MongoDB, and Elio Narciso of ScaleStack. How are y'all? Very good, thank you. Thank Doing you. great. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, amazing, amazing. So let's talk a little bit about ScaleStack. Tell us a little bit about the company and what it's accomplishing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we started the company to help really salespeople become more efficient in their daily job. Uh, Salesforce put a study out last year. They interviewed about 8,000 reps and they asked them, what do you do all day? And the results were stunning. Basically, 70% or more of the time of a rep today is spent on manual activities, finding data about companies, people, orchestrating and organizing that data. And we want to change all of that. Mm. I was talking to you earlier and telling you about our mission. It's really to automate anything that can be automated with technology and let people do what we are good at, which is human interaction and like engaging with people in order to understand what their needs are and find the right solution for those needs and not like putting data into a system like a CRM or mm -hmm. finding that data onto like new sites and all of that. So that was the mission, that was uh, the goal that we wanted to accomplish and we're working hard to make it a reality. Ilio, if I can ask, what, do you, what technology do you use to accomplish that? Because that sounds like a hard problem. Yeah. So um, we started, I, I used to work at AWS, so like uh, very familiar with like uh, everything AWS. And so we, we are built on AWS. We use a lot of Mongo as well to like, uh, because we orchestrate a ton of data. Imagine like a rep needs to find, you know, information about companies and firmographics data. Where are they based? How many people? One, how many locations? And then news about them, financial data, and then news, you know, like uh, information about people that work at those companies. Yeah. That's a lot of data that needs to be orchestrated. And then with that orchestration comes also like uh, the search for insights by connecting these data sets with one another, which is the key missing item today. Mm -hmm. It's easy, relatively easy to connect data sets into the CRM, Salesforce mm -hmm. for instance, but it's not easy to draw insights. Cool. And that's why like uh, RAG and all of these uh, technologies that we are now using are like phenomenal for that because you can use LLMs and there are many now, but like they all use the same data and it's very generic. You want to make that like uh, that those models work for you with the insights that you need for like that purpose. Mm -hmm. And in our case is like a sales purpose. Well, so but let's back up the you've been doing this since I think 2021, right? Yeah. And even though AI is not new, right, if you read the papers or whatever, you'd think that it just came out just the last started. year. Mm -hmm. How has your technology stack evolved, if at all? Maybe you've always been doing the, the exact same thing, but how has it evolved over time? Maybe in your use of MongoDB, but also in your use of AWS. In terms of like the stack, not that much. I mean, like now we use back to search and uh, like, you know, we started using just Atlas uh, for like all of the databases needs. Uh, I think that what's changed over the last two years, uh, I'd say, is that we could have done everything that we're doing just with the automation platform that we have built, building workflows, connecting the data, and making sense with like database technologies uh, of the data itself. But AI makes everything so much better at the edge. It customizes the data much faster. It like brings insights by connecting, normalizing, prioritizing the data, and that's a lot of. Uh, the, the stuff that like reps and people in sales have to do. So like, uh, for instance, like a simple example, if I am like uh, targeting a specific set of companies today, I need to understand what are the attributes that define my ideal customer profile. And like, you know, before AI it would have been difficult, it would have been like a manual process to say, okay, what are the attributes that define my ideal customer profile? Mm -hmm. Now we use AI to analyze the data, cluster like data sets, and so that then we can define the common threads in those clusters and say, okay, these are like the attributes of your ideal customer profile. Then those are the data, you know, um, parameters that we're going to find and synthesize and normalize and prioritize for the reps. I know that, um, that you've started using or at least started experimenting with Amazon Bedrock. Yeah. And you mentioned before LLMs or large language models. When we were talking just before this, you said... You said experimenting, 
to figure out what exactly Bedrock and the L and different LLMs would be good for. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, I think that like um, what we are seeing, like, you know, we've been now working on this for the past two years. And I think what we're seeing is that like uh, the advantage of having different LLMs in the market is that like each of them will be good for some specific purpose. Some LLMs are great for like, for instance, like putting together writing emails like personalized emails that take into account like uh, the insights that you found about specific companies or people. Some others are better to aggregate and understand the insights like that you want to find by connecting the dots between these different data yeah. sets and synthesize the data. Or to like, uh, like the example I gave earlier about the idea of customer profile. Um, and so we're seeing that like uh, different LLMs are good for specific purposes. And we are now starting experimenting on uh, Bedrock because they just release features that allow you to like move from LLM to LLM like in a relatively easy fashion, which is what we need. I mean, like our AI engineering team is experimenting. Say, okay, let's try Claude for like uh, the emails and let's see what type of emails. And some emails are like more formal. Open yeah. AI emails are like, you know, um, now like getting better. So like that's the flexibility that we want to keep experimenting and to keep like using the right LLM for the right purpose. Nice. Yeah, so there's no one LLM to rule them all at this point in time, right? You know, no, which being is, able to, yeah. yeah, which is, uh, I mean, that's, I think, what's really changed. They're like open AI, open everybody's out yeah. about like the potential, but there were so many people working on this for like decades. Um, and so, yeah, amazing. What would you say to somebody, to a developer or a company um, starting today, doesn't have to be specific to AI. Well, actually, let's make it specific to AI. Okay. Um, where do they start? Like, there's so much noise. It's at, and our CEO, uh, David Echeria, talked a little bit about this in his keynote. It's the, the market's so noisy. What I advice would you give for someone to start? Always start with a customer. I think that, like, uh, all of this... It's great technology, but these are tools to an end, to a mean, like, you know, like an end point, which is add value to a customer. So I think the recommendation to anybody starting, it's always like, listen to the customer. What is that they need? And what is the use case that you are like motivated by to solve? And then work backwards. A lot of us have worked at Amazon and like, you know, the working backwards mentality is so important because it's like, listen to the customer first, find the use case, instead of like trying to push a technology to a customer for like a need that maybe is not that important. So that's my recommendation. I made a mistake. I like invented technology that like, you know, people thought it was cool, but then like, uh, it was not like a master. And instead with Scalestack, we spent so much time like understanding the needs of our customers. And by the way, you guys, Mongo to be the customers are very We are in fact the customers. Yes. And, uh, and so we, working backwards from that, it's like super important, I would say. The technologies, there is a ton of technology. Great. It's developing fast. And now with AI, we can customize at the edge, but never lose sight of what is that you want to solve for a customer. All right. So I'm not asking you for an infomercial. <laughs> and y yes, you are at the Mongo to be conference, but speak honest. Why did you choose? Why did you choose to use MongoDB in the first place? And, and tell us a little bit more about what your experience has been and maybe give some advice to somebody who's yeah. trying it or thinking about trying it. I think, uh, like, uh, well, first of all, it, it, it's always important to work with companies that you really like, the people that work at that company. For me, it's very important. And so, like, we had experience working with Mongo before, like, Scalestack and so that was for us like not su such a difficult choice. I think like the flexibility and elasticity uh, of MongoDB is very important for our technical team because like, you know, our needs change and vary like depending on the use case, depending on the consumption and the flexibility and elasticity that we have on MongoDB is very important to us. And then I think you guys have done a great job of like keeping the pace of innovation with AI, with tools that like uh, can satisfy like the demand of like organizing tons of data, which is very important for us. Because like we have like millions of data points for customers that we monitor and they're like data about companies, people, and it needs to be well done. And so I would say the pace of innovation is also very important. You never can stop. Nice, amazing. So I think that we have some, uh, you have some case studies 
that we have linked in the video description. So viewers, yeah. if you want to check out, check out those case studies, they're linked in the video description. Uh, any, any last words before we head out, Elio? Oh, I think that like uh, what we were saying before about like uh, never lose sight of customers is my key message here. Uh, I think that um, being passionate about what you do uh, means that like listen to what people want. And so building something that people want mm -hmm. is very rewarding. As an entrepreneur, yeah. I think that there is nothing better than people actually using your product. And so... Yeah, build something that people want would be my message. I'm glad you've done that because the alternative is bankruptcy. <laughs> uh, so well done. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, Ilio and Matt, for joining us thank on you. this live stream. We're going to have another amazing session coming up, coming up very soon. Uh, we're going to go on a quick break and we'll be right back.